Um, we'll start the, the meeting right now talking about control women's question or follow-up discussion. I do agree with what Kim has said, but it wasn't on the recording, so you want to say it again? Yeah, I said I really appreciate um, all of the feedback that you've given, but it's a lot, and I don't think I have time to digest it and ask uh, intelligent questions in the time we have tonight, so I'd like to take it, read it. Really, absolutely, and I mean, it really is just intended to provide the three of our, you know, kind of thoughts on it. And like I said, really, um, you know, Amanda kind of took the lead, and then Retta, you know, filled in her, her thoughts, and um, and and then I, I kind of filled in some things as well. And so just, and, and I, I agree with, you know, uh, you know. We, we were kind of on the same page, so it was pretty easy <laughs> in, a lot, in a lot of regards. And, and I think it's really to spark, yeah, further conversation and clarification so that so that we all, yeah, can have a clear idea of what direction do we want to go. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I had some ideas, too, and maybe I will type mine up, too, and just add them somehow to what's here. And, and Joanna, if you have anything else, or can send them to somebody who would like to do that, if they would prefer Yeah, yeah, to that would be great. Um, you know, I, when I dissect something, I get all of the people on board and try to bring all the ideas and then go through those and narrow those down to the ones that are prioritizing them. And I think most of you probably work the same way, but it kind of helps my thought process. And the reason I was thinking along these lines is because, you know, right now we're thinking about and have um, voted on some money down here for Hickok Street and thinking about the future of the farmer's market, um, which I personally am very excited to see it move downtown. I think that it has the potential, if done in the right place, the right way, and at the right time to help other businesses and to help to bring community back downtown, which I think is what we're all looking for. So, mm -hmm. um, However, you know, there seems to be more than one school of thought as to where that should be, what it should look like, um, you know, whether streets are open or closed, I mean, just kind of the, um, you know, the details. So um, I know that in the past there was some money spent. I don't know how much it was before I was here to draw up plans. And I think I briefly seen those one time early on before I was officially on council maybe. And don't remember a lot of details, but um, you know now we have ex expended money or getting ready to to do drawings again. So you know I just want to make sure that um, we don't put the cart before the horse and make sure that you know there's a firm decision as to what the town plan is going to look like, where that really fits best into it, and um, you know not spend money that may not be helpful. So um, that said, I'm all, like I said, all for the farmer's market in here. I think we should, um, when we talk about the farmer's market and we talk <coughs> about um, the important things that you're bringing out as far as location and things like that, what's really and where should we be? Because I know that um, the ARC grant, it was typically gather um, guidance to, to help um, uh, the possibility for a business owner to be able to uh, develop some more of his property and the stuff. But at the same time, um, I just think you, you don't want to take winners and losers to just fix that money. And you think that they're going to invest. That our people are really here that are investing. And so it's just making sure that you account for those people too, that everybody has the, the chance to be able to succeed in the downtown. It doesn't matter. Just because somebody says that they have money and that they are going to build a building, it doesn't mean that you're just going to change things for the whole, you know, for the whole area just to make it for them to, to be able to, to do that too. I don't think that that's, in my instance, just from being an owner downtown, that just brings a very sour taste, and that's just my opinion. Um, I do think that uh, that I think we'll talk more about the ARC grants in a minute. But it's talking about if you're talking about the farmers market, and I'm just 
That would be the same thing. So did you all want to, were there any other questions on the, on the questions for Kim? I do, want to, I do want to ask one more that I want you to work on. Uh, I saw the, which was a new drawing to me, the one from the Alcorns that you had sent me in an email. That was in 2016? Yeah, but I, that was a new one to me. I never okay. seen the, uh, where they wanted the farmer's market on the back of their building. That's yeah. obviously private yeah. property. Right, and I don't to think the council honest, at the time really yeah, did, did wanted that. So that, well, that, I think that it's, it's an interesting idea. I thought we talked about it at think, one point a few But years I don't ago. think it's a, from the visibility aspect, mm -hmm. I don't think it's definitely a good location. Right. Um, yeah, and I think that was a general consen consensus of it. Yeah. yeah. And, and but then Hickok Street, you're using a main street, and I think one of my biggest problems, and I can tell you from my personal experience downtown, is easy access, easy right. in, easy out, yeah, and parking I, spaces. And I think parking is a main, main issue for downtown in many ways. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it, yeah, it definitely is a. Is a, is, is a problem, well, not a problem, but it is, it is a, something that will need to be addressed. And, and we kind of address it in here as well in many different ways, whether it's working with, uh, with churches, uh, you know, that, that have different parking needs than, than most businesses downtown. So are there, are there opportunities to work with them to have certain areas or spaces that would be available during non you know, church days, you know, or Wednesdays, because that tends to be a time that, you know, churches have events as well, you know, and so, um, and then also, you know. On Thursdays, they have the Presbyterian Church, has their meals, some wheels. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, it would have to be coordinated, right. You have, there is a lot mm -hmm. of things that the Presbyterian Church does in around this area. I mean, they mm -hmm. literally feed right. the homeless. Yeah, and I'm not talking about the whole parking lot. I mean, you know, are there five, ten spaces? I know Salem has done this model, and it's worked well for them. Where, where well, they, Salem you know, is not using the main road, too. They are off the road. And they are, you know, or are you specifically talking about parking for the farmer's market or parking in general no, for a vibrant I downtown? I you were talking about farmer's market. Oh, okay, I, I yeah. wasn't sure. Yeah. yeah, so I do think that bringing that idea back again and trying to figure out, you know, and um, I really want to find out whatever happened to that committee, because I know in town council meeting last week, we, you know, that was brought out about the 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 money to be given out for, for these plans, but where is the meeting that were supposed to take place about the, trying to come up with ideas of what... Yeah, that, that was never planned to happen before before the contract was approved by Council of Hill Studios. So, so they are not doing anything until that committee gets together and finds out. Because the, the way I work, you, you find out what your needs are first and what does everybody need before you spend the money. Right, and that, that had been done several years ago. That had been done several years ago with the ARC construction grant, and the, you know that council supported, and that we applied for specifically for Hickok Street for the farmers market. But there market. was so, not so enough it had, money it for had that. been done. Yeah, but it had it wasn't the full amount, and so we didn't and receive the full amount. Then there That's were correct. changes on the street where it was going to be open, and then we didn't get enough money for the funding. And I do correct. want to find out enough information about the ARC. But, but we we got enough that we think we could build. And I think that there was a four-year request back in 22. Uh, I believe that was you that had done it, but I can verify that. that and I provided all the contracts and, and background information that were requested at that time. And, and I have it in a file, and I'm happy to So there to is give it nothing new that has come up ever since? Because I thought ever since you were going to have this committee. We were never going to have the committee until we were under contract with a designer. Well, we were talking about it last year, and then yeah. you were telling me that you were going to have the people together for this. So you guys met before then? We have not met. Okay. No. So, so, so the, man uh, the, management, the management team, yeah, so this is how it works, is that you have the ARC uh, that, that we have to have a management team together, and that could be, uh, and, and, and we have a, uh, a management plan, uh, and and uh, I know it's been shared with Central uh, Business before, but I'm happy to, to provide it again. Uh, but basically, it just it, it has a, a member of the farmers market, uh, and uh, we're going to have a business owner downtown. And of course, we need to get this group back together. You know, it, but basically, they would be charged with working with the designer. 
to come up with the final design for the uh, for the farmers market. Well, and who is making the idea of of it being a permanent farmers market there because yeah, that, that the, the location plan. can actually yeah, really that, change. I mean, right uh, now we have the parking lot. That was decided by council. Can, I, can you let me speak, please? Uh, 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 no, I, I didn't mean to cut you off. I really didn't. I'm trying to talk. So, but I didn't mean to cut you off. Though. Okay. I'm sorry. Well, ever since last year, the purchase of the parking lot behind the museum had not taken place. Now there is that location that the town owns right now. That parking lot that is owned, that is going to facilitate a lot of parking spaces for, for the downtown. And one of the reasons why I was so against this it was because of that one building, the drive through building, was obviously not part of, we didn't even get a title for that, title, clean title for that. And so as far as that building goes, you know, there should be a process as far as like even looking into what about the farmer's market being there? Because, I mean, that would be a perfect location for it. You want visibility. You want the parking spaces. It's not taking a main street. And you have the ability to have a lot more people downtown in the downtown area because now all of a sudden you have walk-ins and walk-outs. That, that, that would be a larger council discussion that we really couldn't make a decision on well, this evening. I mean, that's certainly something that I central business could bring central back business to. I understand, but business can bring it out to town council absolutely. as uh, Mm -hmm. as, a, as a way, would you second that to, to review this for the... I, 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 will, I, will, I will say that, you know, that the council has, you know, did enter into the ARC construction grant and was awarded the construction grant for a farmer's market structure on Hickok Street. And that, and that was after, that. you know, many years of trying to... I, I don't... I think everybody wishes we had a vacant lot on a corner, you know, that we could we could put. Well, this is not in market. a corner, but it's in the main of the. Right. No, I think that would be that would be location. ideal. But we we just as we continue to look and look and look for space, you know, we we have we just hadn't found a, well, found a good space. Well, before we didn't own it. So yeah, I mean, it, it would change our ability to move forward with the ARC construction grant, and so My that would be a council decision. My understanding for that space it was that it was a community gathering space that that was the ARC grant. It wasn't really de defined as a farmer's market we structure. D we, we, do have, we do have performance measurement standards that we have, we have to meet as part of that grant. Um, and that, that would include basically having a farmer's, farmer's market. farmer's market in there. Well, I mean, I, I'd have to look, look at that specifically. But and I mean, you even mentioned to me within the last year that it could have been used for anything in there that, that required that it was related to community space. It didn't have to be the farmers market. I mean, we can. Why don't we look at documents then that are part of? I that. think we don't have time right now. I think you can. Well, we can look at that for next it. time. Okay. All right. And then I just want to bring this out because. I do think yeah. it's important to know exactly I know. what we're doing. You, you've, you've asked the question before, and we've gone back to the, to the Appalachian Regional Commission staff and to the Department of Housing and Community Development, and it was very narrowly you know, defined of what we could use the dollars for, and is for a farmer's market structure From my understanding, or a community for gathering the space structure. Okay. It was for the yeah. gathering I'm space. happy to go back and verify yeah. that again. Let's look at that. Um, mm -hmm. And then we can bring that to Tom Council. Will you be okay with that? I think. Before is the time to discuss it. I don't think this meeting is going to get us anywhere, so yeah, I'm okay to discuss it at a later date in council. Yeah, that would be really good. Um, because there is a lot of definitely a lot of things that have to go along with that. Obviously, there is no, from my understanding, the paperwork. The building is not even ours right now, and so which building? The the drive-through and the paperwork, the title wasn't cleaned for that. So there is a follow-up, you know, how do we make sure that we I mean, do that, the paperwork yeah, and that's the That's something I can bring up to Randy, because yeah. if you're saying that, I mean, we, we purchased that property. Did you say there was no money in the budget to remove that this year? Or Co correct, right, right. As far as the demolition, yes, as far as the demolition. Well, we can go uh, off to town council, because I know Valerie had said. Uh, I thought really you were saying we don't own the building. The we, building we, we was own, said in the, the title building. work, we purchased it, but the title insurance didn't give us clean title because it said that it was, he had uh, paperwork in there showing that there was a still on uh, by um, another bank or something like that. Um, and just to clarify for my email too, we, we, we 
the council has, well, in, in their current budget, uh, the proposed budget has money set aside for the demolition of. So the, we do have it on the budget. The structure, correct. Yeah. Good. Okay. Mm -hmm. I thought you did. You said we didn't have money for them. No, not not until July first. That's why we don't oh, have well, specific we are not plans gonna be right now. Making any messes until then. Anyway. Yeah, because you you had asked for a presentation this evening, and I did not think we were ready for that. As after I talked with Randy you, about that. Do we just need to reach out to the bank and get permission to tear that building down? No, no I mean it, it, we've purchased the building. I mean, we purchased the property. Well, our attorney he believes that it did, and, and the well, majority of council did as well. Yeah. No, not all council. Well, the majority of council did approve it. Yeah. Well, it approved the purchase with clean title. I mean, with the with what was provided. But he didn't provided. have clean title, Andrew. And we do have title insurance as well. Um, the title insurance didn't cover it. Anyhow, well. Okay, we'll that, that seems to be yeah larger larger subject for for the full council, I would say. The Pythagorean. Okay, <laughs> that's me, I guess. <laughs> All right, so we had, I had proposed um, the last time we talked about the facade grant some uh, potential changes, and you had asked for an update about the existing round that's happening right now as far as the people who had been awarded. Is that, mm -hmm. what, which one would you like to hear about first? Or Let's hear one? about that one first. Okay, if so that's okay. Yeah, um, so of the four applicants that we had, of course, the one that's um, right over here with um, um, the building that had the, the rocks put in before you guys reviewed, we, yeah. we excluded that one. The one that was the vet clinic, is obviously on the market. They have dropped out and they will not be proceeding with their facade grant. Mm -hmm. The um, quotes that they received for the Cambria Depot building is what was very astronomically high for painting the building. So I do not believe that they are going to move forward with that. And that lists the South View, um, which is down West Main Street. And that property did take down their Roof that was midway of the building yeah, to right be now. able to yeah, part of it to be able to install the um, they're not awnings. What is it? Help yeah, it's like a metal. Yeah, the, the yes, the it's but, like hasn't awning, been, but, but that's not been put up. But they do have quotes, and they were intending to put that up in the period of time. So they they are the only one that was intending on moving forward with um, that portion of the facade request. And that one, that one piece was well above the dollar amount that um, would would qualify for you know for the dollars from us. So I think that they were not necessarily going to rush to do the um, the stonework that was the ramping and everything across the front and the retail windows on the middle of the building. So that's pretty much the update on those four properties. That so we you do around. think that they will have it finished and everything? By They're intending time, to have it done. They submitted everything with the quotes and they intended, so I don't know if things are on back order right now, and they, they started the process and took down to be able to put that piece up, and their intentions were to move forward with it, yes. So if there is, because I know he had applied in the past and everything, and nothing took place during that time, but if he's, obviously, it will have to be finished by the time, so if it is not, then the chances he, are. Yep. Will then he will drop out. So that would be the only one. Yeah. The, yeah. He would be the only one if um, if they do complete the work. And I do know that there is a potential for um, applicants to ask for an extension from six months to nine months. I think we talked yeah, about. Uh, Pardon? I don't remember it ever that being part of central business. Oh, it might not have been. It was in the contract though that they signed. So it has a timeline for them to do the work, and then if they needed more time, that they could request an extension in the contract. And they have not requested an extension. I'm just saying they do have the potential to do that. I've never seen that as part of, obviously, I didn't make the contract, but that was never brought up to central business that I ever remembered. And the contract is based on the contracts that I think we have used in previous years for the facade program. Have you ever seen that thing? Can we, uh, can I receive a, a copy of that contract, please? Thank you. And then, did you want to talk about the next year facade mm -hmm. grant still? Okay. Yeah. 
So, um, so yeah, I had made some proposals for changes, and we also had a proposed timeline um, that we had talked about at the central business where we talked about the pod grant last, which I can't remember if it was last meeting or two meetings ago now. I think it was two meetings ago. That might be wrong. Um, so I didn't know if you would like me to go over these changes again in this timeline, or are you? Or I don't think because I don't think because nothing has we haven't I haven't seen anything from you as far as like that day. Have you? Um, where are you on now with the process? Well, what we had the paperwork I had provided that day with the proposed mm -hmm. changes was still pending your review and approval. So mm -hmm. uh, I haven't done anything more waiting to know if this is okay. moving forward or not moving forward. Thanks. Okay. So I still have. Do you have a copy right there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's what I. I mean, that's what it's here from. <laughs> <clears throat> when we went over the, um, I had a question online was profit versus yeah. non-profit. Yeah, I'm getting we can copy, make copy, copy. Oh, I got oh, two. Oh, you right have copy. Oh, oh One has the back, one has the this one. Yeah, yeah, I have two copies. To look at. I did like the, the comment that you made last year regarding um, businesses that have applied for this in the past to be able to um, kind of do, a, I wouldn't say a penalty, but like a, what? Like some time frame for them to just not reapply for a while, maybe a year or two. I think you mentioned that last year. Yeah, I think that's in the, the proposed changes. Because I think that uh, we could have potential for multiple businesses to request, you know, the same. Like South View, they could ask for another facade grant next year to do their stonescape that they didn't do this year, this round. And I just don't know if it makes sense to have the same business getting the mm -hmm. dollars. Which I mean, I saw it was going to be every ten years for business for address. Oh no, I don't think we proposed that. No, I just said I, I, well, I was suggesting you not during your time, but it was uh, oh, previous to that. Got it. Okay. Well, I um, I don't I don't know that ten years necessarily makes sense either, but um, I do know that there are multiple businesses that are are interested in the facade program. I've had multiple people reaching out to me asking to apply because it's still on the town's website from the last round of facade grants. And so um, I said, you know, it's not open right now, and it's still in central business to, for them to decide if, if we're going to move forward with it for another round. And so um, I am waiting to hear, I guess, basically what your response is to the timeline that I had proposed and to the proposed changes. To be honest with you, and this is my opinion too on this, I am so sad to know that, you know, like we, we – shorter in the years last year. And we, we did all the different things as far as allowing more businesses to apply for, uh, you know, for the whole town and everything, not getting more response. Um, I think that, you know, and this is for me having businesses and everything, looking at what we have downtown right now and in the Cambria area or the, around a lot of places in the town. I do think that for anybody to look at your um, businesses and not look at the town first, and especially like the, the main entrances to, the, to the, the gateways, rehabilitation, I do think that, you know, I personally will say, you know, maybe we take a break for a year and what we'll do is obviously we'll have to go to town council but maybe giving the ability to rehabilitate, use the $25,000 for the town to rehabilitate the gateways. Um, so it makes an impact difference when you come to the town, so it makes you happy to be in the town. And then that at the same time, I know it's not going to bring revenue, but that is obviously fixing and beautifying your, the, the area where you live. Um, I don't know how you feel about this with the, with this whole just one business and with the possibility of the same business repeating, getting you know more grants and everything. When in reality there is just I don't think that would be a possibility if you worked into the 
the agreement that it was something that they couldn't reapply the next year. Yeah, it, you wouldn't have to worry about that if it was something that was written into the, the rules associated with applying. <clears throat> Which I, I feel like that's the reason why I proposed that was because I felt like it wouldn't be necessarily fair for the same businesses to apply. In, but you know, um, so if we had it written in, then that would exclude them from uh, being able to apply. But then again, we also could make it so that part of the scoring criteria from the committee that reviews the facade grants could score higher for first-time applicants than previous applicants. So you could you could build it into the scoring process, so they ultimately would get a lower score and would be less likely to be awarded a grant because they are a former applicant. If you didn't want to write it into the the rules. I mean, there's just so many ways that we can spend the money in it too. Uh, right now, obviously, it's not free money. It's not, you know, we, we still have to figure out, Valerie still has to figure out how to come up with the money every year to make it work. But those $25,000 even for the fixing of the drive through that we just purchased recently. Well, you know, if, we, if the need's parking, we can have more parking there and fix that parking lot. $25,000 will go. I mean, I know it's not a lot of money, but it will go a lot of the way because it will help businesses too. You, you fix the parking lot, more businesses, more people will want to park there and go to those shops. So I don't know. I think. Um, then the hemorrhage of people, you said you had several businesses that have already. Yeah. Reach down yeah. Uh, the, I, I, I'm, in the top of my head, I know of at least three within the last like two months that have would reached they out. Would according to this criteria? Yes, I believe they would. They have they received money before? No. What I do like about the facade grant program is that even though we are. You know, giving this grant as money for for the businesses, they are also investing a whole lot more than the amount of money that we're putting into it. So there's more dollars that are being spent to the upgrades and the fixes that we see around town than what what the town is putting in for their portion. You know, so if we spent it the money in a different way on a parking lot or on flowers or, or gateway improvements, those dollars are just the dollars that we have, and that's it. Nobody else is contributing. Where if we put it towards the businesses, they are contributing way above and beyond, you know, just the South View to, to do the improvements that they were doing, it was they were going to be getting $5,000 from the town and they were going to be spending like $36,000 to get that one piece of that project completed. So that's a big, that's a, a big improvement in expense that may, may or may not have been done if they didn't get a, an award. I think, um, for example, the gateway that you're looking over here in Raleigh, that one bothers me really. Very much so. There is potholes all around there. And the business, the gas station right behind there, obviously, you know, you see it all the time. But you know that one of the main reasons that I don't go to the gas station is because of those potholes? Yeah. And I drive so at Reiner. When you say gateway improvement, are you talking about repaving or, or filling potholes? I thought you were talking about like flowers no, or but, um, lines or something. Well, I mean, that that goes along with the town's maintenance work that needs to be done, you know. But if you, if the town, for example, if I expect public works to do flowers around the, the, the sign and everything else, like you have beautiful welcoming flowers when around your sign, then all this, all of a sudden you, and the town may go and patch those holes because now all of a sudden, the flowers don't look as attractive because now there's potholes right next to it. Or well, we I mean now that you've made me aware of it, I, I will have public works look at that area. Of that town would be really nice. Tomorrow. I was going to yeah. say the yeah. thing yeah. is, so, so we, we like can handle those be particular issues. The potholes regardless and please of feel free, are. yeah, please feel free to reach out to Randy with any of those types of issues. At well, any time. just look at them. He looks horrific, yeah, yeah, and now yeah. that he rains we, we all do. the time, we got yeah. like water yeah. everywhere. And okay. I mean, to me, I still I look at that sign there, and and even I I try to envision what it would look like with some flowers there in front of it because there's not very much lawn or area around it anyway, it would just be a few flowers in front of a, a backdrop that is a gas station that is still pretty ugly. So I don't think that, to me, it wouldn't make that much of a difference or an improvement at all to see that 
have some flowers. <laughs> I don't know because, you know, you're, it's the same concept that you were saying. If somebody else fixes their thing, yeah, I agree. then all of a sudden you will fix your thing because now all this, you don't notice that gas station unless you need it, but you don't notice it much That's because the there is nothing that brings your attention there. Uh, but I do think that if you brought flowers and you made your sign and your entrance really beautiful, that all of a sudden that gas station will look like crap. You know, I didn't mean to be, I'm not laughing at you. I was thinking about, the last time I just went through there, somebody drove through the front of that gas station, and it's got a big plywood front on it right now because <laughs> they, they must have smashed the windows. And so right now it's a huge eyesore. I mean, but that's what stands out. That stood out to me as like, whoa, this is really ugly, this gas station. <laughs> and this is what I see is the ugliness of this gas station. It's not funny because it's so ugly that. that I haven't even noticed the difference in that. It's not because now it's recorded. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> but hopefully they will. Um, I mean, it's it's unfortunate for them that. But hopefully, you know, <laughs> like I just think that even like if you put some flowers around them and stuff, and who is to say? But you know, the one over there where David Hagen's is on Grown-Up Street. We had that beautiful sign. I think if we had any room to put flowers around there, the chances are that all of a sudden you may want to see what's up there on that hill. I don't know, you know. Um, there is businesses up there that maybe, you know, not that they need improvement, but they will make the town a lot more welcoming. Uh, and because that's beautiful, all of a sudden, maybe across the street, dudes will do a lot more improvements, or someone else may do more improvements, because now the other side of town looks really nice. I will tell you, I moved here in 2019, and I have seen improvements occurring all around town. There's uh, there's big things that have happened, a lot of blighted looking buildings that have either come down or been fixed up. Um, and I do think that the, the niceness of Christiansburg is spreading. So I do think we are making an impact there from whatever perspective, whoever whoever's driving that, it's probably just one little thing adding to another little thing and, and it is happening. So I do think that's happening, but I don't think that it's worth taking the dollars away from the facade program to try to do some of those other things. And, my and I'm not saying we're going to take it away for the next 10 years. What I'm just saying, maybe you do a break for a year and use the money where it's really needed, and we know that we're going to be able to use that. Because right now, for example, we got $25,000, and this is where I'm coming out of. We got $25,000 for this little, for this committee to work with. How can we work with the central, and when I say central business, it's everything. It's farmer's market, it's businesses, it's bringing, you know, people to the town. How do you bring people to the town? You bring them because you beautify the place. And one of the things for me, I love art. And for me, I, and I'm, when you're saying beautifying, the downtown is being beautified, the whole town is being beautified, I'm one of those people. Yeah, I think it's working it. on it. I mean, I'm patching holes. I'm fixing outside. I'm, I, I'm, I love this community. And when you talk about investment, my children are painting. My children are fixing all the things that need to be. They're planting flowers outside. They're, you know, we're working on projects to rehabilitate mm -hmm. buildings, not because it's going to bring businesses to us, but because it makes us feel better about our town. So the dollars that are budgeted, are they budgeted, $25,000 is budgeted to central business? Is that the way that the budget is? No, I think it's through, how it's is it? It's a facade grant program. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, but it can be, I'm sure, with town council approval, uh, depending on how the conversation goes. It can very well, you know, be distributed in different ways to, to help. Because if the, if the program is to help, um, any help that we can provide for the downtown can help, or for the rest of the town. Beautifying process, like the the murals, is such an important um, asset to a community. I see murals as a welcoming site. You know, the Radford mural murals right now, they're stunning. The one over there by Cambria is really nice. Um, I don't know. There's just a lot of possibilities out there. So perhaps we need to offer, as part of the facade grant, the ability to do murals? Well, the murals is through the art com uh, subcommittee. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's a really good way, Amanda, for you to, when you're reaching out to these businesses that have walls 
under buildings. So maybe are not so pretty, you know, to bring, because I do think murals bring people. Do you have to have a, uh, if you want to paint a mural on your own building, do you have to have somebody in the town agree to that? No. No, I mean, it, it basically, it just, it, it cannot be a, well, if it, if it is classified as a sign, then it has to meet the sign regulations. No, and, but if and it's then art. If it's, if it's art, and it's clearly art, you know. No yeah. words, just yeah. art. Yeah, no. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, right, what? but if I mean, if you, mm -hmm. you know, if you sold flowers, for instance, like as a florist, you know, then and there's flowers on a mural, then that, you know, are those products and that's that you sell? What, you know? And that's what's really yeah. sad. So before I own a flower shop, I wanted to help that business owner to paint a mural on the side of the wall. You know why it hasn't been done? Because Randy said that we that it would be considered a sign if I paint any flowers on there. And, and you so may still the, be able to do it. It just would have to meet the sign regulations. You know, the, for a sign. You know, so it was. I those sign regulations yeah. from Randy really, uh, or whoever made those. It, it, well, they, it's adopted by town council. council. That's right. Us. Yeah. I, yeah. That's I, I mean, it's just another conversation for right. another day. But yeah. when, but when you talk about <laughs> helping businesses, those are the things that you have to struggle with because all of a sudden now you want something beautiful on the side of the building. And you, they rather. It seems like you'd rather have a brick wall that doesn't look yeah. very pretty. <coughs> right. but, but there are people that have done done them. You know, like the well, e the eagle on Marie March's prop, uh, building. You know that. You know that that. You know, but I really can be got told not to, that I that I cannot do it because it will have flowers in it, and I will put flowers anywhere, and it doesn't mean because it's. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I just don't. Yeah, and again, we're, it, it, you know, it is, you're, you're pretty much looking at staff that would help, you know, interpret the ordinances. So, I mean, we're, we're looking to work with, you know, individuals that want to do something. But again, if it, it, it you know, that we, we do have to make a determination at some point, you know, but again, so, so we'd be happy. Yeah, exactly. I'd love to see it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and now I have to watch it with that. So. I guess through the Well, I mean, you wouldn't get a facade grant, you know, but oh, you no, but, but you do it on it. your own. I probably, was going right? to do it for free yeah. for them, and I'll still do it for free for myself. Well, okay. obviously, it's yeah. for me, but. Yeah, I mean, if you want to share a design with us, you yeah. know, yeah. I, I was thinking. And again, of, you may be able to do it as a I design. was thinking about doing like the whole thing, but anyway. But I wouldn't, you know, I would say that, you know, please don't be discouraged by, you know, not doing it. Well, you know, I have been really very should. discouraged by a lot of things. Well, yeah. <laughs> Lately, it's a, talking with the fire of the, the local business, and I don't know a lot of it if it's just political or if it's just not only that, but it's more than that. You know. Yeah, I would say that it is just enforcement of the signage ordinance and, and of other ordinances in town, and I wouldn't take it for more than that. Yeah. I mean, and you know. maybe we need to look at some of the sign ordinances because I think some of them are kind of silly too. You know, like the this last week's topic on the little blow-up dolls is what mm -hmm. they call them. I don't know what they're called, but mm -hmm. I mean, four businesses in a week were asked to take those down and. I don't think they heard They don't even have a sign on it. Right. It doesn't say anything yeah. on it. And it, it was based My on four feet from guy other business wasn't owners. doing yeah. anything but well, getting rid of the birds. Yeah. <laughs> so we don't know. <laughs> oh, we know I mean, I literally got it to get rid of the birds in front of our building because they were building houses yeah. on there. But. And again, you know, staff is, well, you know, yeah. I mean, we're kind of getting off subject, but, yeah. you know, the, uh, you, you know, it, it, as yeah, I mean it, it could but be you do it could be made fairly really clear because you want counsel. to do things and mm -hmm. then you want to get things that are cool, but then all of a sudden it's like oh you cannot do that. It's like your parents are telling you don't do that, and so and I'm a good listener, so I just okay, you know. <laughs> when I met with the business in downtown, um, Sub Rosa Studios mentioned that they were interested in doing a mural on their fence that goes the whole length of the property on the back side of the building because oh, that's, cool. that's a big a bit. I mean, it's very visible right now, but I don't know that it's going to be very visible in the future because the new building that's going there may block the visibility of it. But um, has there been any plans for this building that we keep talking? I mean, it's been talked since 2016. We've not had any plans submitted, no. Yeah. So I mean, we have been be making plans on this for so many years. I think the only yeah. reason why he brought or, it up is because the artwork went through some eyes before it was I can imagine their artwork would be amazing. <laughs> yeah. I do yeah. think that the only reason so why this... 
I think the only reason why that came up over the years was to get rid of their problem, which was the creek underneath their building. So, uh, and you're going to say whatever you want to say, so the government will spend the money. Any work. <laughs> But anyhow, um, one, one thing I would like to say is, you know, um, and one of my answers and where they were, I don't, I don't know if it, it's part of it, but one thing, the thing that's always consistent is things always are changing. So if if there are things in the code that you all see that will help the town progress and that that need to be changed or that people come to you, like, you know, you're talking about everybody coming together, and we're all wanting the same thing, which was the success of Christiansburg. You know, if there's things we want changed, then then maybe, you know, we can try to... Well, maybe that can be then, but I, I cannot, so I'll have to go through CAM, because I started, like, even trying to go with the art committee and talking to the subcommittee team and, and telling them, you know, what's considered or whatever because, you know. That, that would be staff that would determine. Right. Okay, yeah. so staff or whatever, but right. um, I don't know, I guess that would be direction of town council, but I do tell you that's from, and it's not being negative, it's being very positive. It's being very positive to try to take on businesses and, and make something beautiful out of them because you have, I have visions and uh, my family have visions for the downtown. They live here. We live here. We love this place. But how do you, if that's my experience, just as a one person, you know, I want to have a, a good. I don't want other people to think. You know, I want people to move here to do things. You know, like if somebody has a sewing machine business or something, why not have clothing like painted on the walls with little needles and like the machine and stuff like that that are fun. I mean, I just grew up with in different environment, obviously different culture. Where our culture, you you paint, you know, the, there is the shoemaker guy in my town, and he's got shoe painted all over the walls, and they look so cool because they're colorful and they got flowers and stuff. Yeah, and then those things are attractive, like the. Envision, you know, I told you all the Envision. And that's why I ended up going there when I was in college because I drove down the street and I saw that sign and I was like, that is a really cool sign. Well, I do feel like so, those kinds of things can, visual interest, you know, is, is a piece of the picture mm -hmm. for yeah. sure. Yeah, it, it catches your eye, like you're saying, and, and, you know, and that may be that we can even we can look at sizing and and or or change something to specifically say something about murals being in a certain section or I mean you know we can come up with something because things modernize and and change so we have to yeah. adapt to those right. I mean at some point there was something about you know carriages and and our ordinance, I'm sure. So when nobody has any of those anymore. So, you know, we, we want to be able yeah. to change. Writing a sign ordinance is, you know, or rewriting a sign ordinance. There's a lot of opinions out there. So it would be a matter of, you know, probably, you know, a lot of, a lot of conversation. And, you know, because if you were able to do a 200 square foot mural on your property that's just, that, that has flowers you sell uh, and, you know, maybe price tags or that can be removable or something. Then that may not be objectionable, uh, you know. But but if somebody did that with a billboard on the side of their building that that somebody did find objectionable, so it does really, you know, you have to come. The community has to come together to see kind of what what is their tolerance and and, what, and how they want to grow. We, you, know. you turn around and then they tell you, you know, you cannot do that because it has flowers. But then all of a sudden you got the rabbit, uh, you know, which I love that business. I want it there, and I think it's super cool. The, they painted their bonnie yeah. thing or whatever. Oh, we had to work with them I several mean, that's, times. That's yeah. really yeah, a sign for real. Yeah. I mean, that's really it, their sign meets, that they're their, local and that's their, everything. It meets their sign ordinance requirements. Because we, we had to work with them quite a bit on that. You know. Well, it's uh, large. Yeah, no, and, and the town of Christiansburg has, very, you know, has a lot of signage ability. You know, I mean, the, the, the town, I, I will tell you that a lot of communities have a third or a fourth of the, the signage that, that you could put on even a downtown business in Christiansburg, let alone 
anything that is in general commercial. The signage allocations are, you know, are, are, are much greater than a lot of a lot of communities. You know, so I mean, again, and that's that's where the community comes in to figure out, okay, well, what, and, and council ultimately, you know, what 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 do you, you know what works for this community? Mm -hmm. And then too, there is the freedom of expression and stuff too. Like, how do you how do you foresee you know that to to be and and stuff? But I do think it's a discussion to have because that will help your job, Amanda. When you are trying to recruit businesses to come to the to the town and figuring out, hey, I want to help you, and they want to come out and say, hey, we want a mural, how can you work with those businesses? Yeah, obviously, knowing that there's this ordinance, but is there uh, a way to to not have to, you know, go through all that craziness? Because the laws are not there to, not to, not to say not to follow, but there is always a way to figure out how can you work because you want businesses, you want the sales, you want the revenue. I mean, those flying things, I mean, people were having them 20 feet high up in the air, and that's great, especially like I don't foresee a place, like for example, the type of place over there alone. Yeah, they probably do have it over there to call people out, come in and see this place, you know, and who is to say maybe that is considered a sign, but you know. I just, there is different opinions. And for me, my opinion is definitely, it wasn't, it's not a fun. It's, we encourage people to have inflatables for Christmas and Halloween and all these other events. And yeah, an inflatable all of a sudden became a bad thing. Anyway, where are we at? I think we covered the um, beautification discussion as part of the facade grant discussion. <laughs> I do want to know what is actually what we want and what does the central business meeting, uh, central business group want out of the ARC grant because there's a lot of things and I really want to know because I feel like we all have opinions about this. But when I ask, if I ask Amanda, just and you know him because obviously you just you moved here when, Amanda? In 2019. 2019. So 2016, you got someone that says that they want to build these buildings, but, and you know their foundation is not doing too well, and you got a creek underneath, and then they come to town council, and they have these big, you know, drawings and everything, how they, they work with the town, and then they tell you that they're going to build this great three-story building, I think they said it was. I'm not sure, kind of, I'm just not sure kind of what, your friend. I mean, I think the council before and there was a downtown watershed uh, study that identified that improvements needed to be done in the in the, the downtown yeah, watershed. Yeah, that was like number eight or ten on the list, and then he was said, and he didn't have. But they came, the owners of those properties came to town council to ask the town if they will move it. From the other side, and even the sides had. Now, said, this was done in, with the previous town manager to Randy, you know, with in, before 2016. Well, but that, that they, the council of, members you know. were still the same. So, um, right. even it, sides had yeah. said in that meeting, I can send you that meeting. But anyhow, so just so you know a little bit of the the history behind it, it's really nice when we have these great ideas of hey, let's help this because it's going to bring more businesses, and I want more businesses downtown. I want. My kids and I walk every day those streets, and we we are part of this community. I mean, we walk it all, all the time. We go and eat at Subway. We go to the baking for lovers. We go to Hardee's. I mean, it's a really walkable downtown now. Um, and I just, you know, I just I think we all want the same thing. Is how we want to get there. Um, and knowing a lot of the things that have been happening during the years, because history tells a story. So anyway, um, if I can have, um, what is what we we want in this meeting? What is it that you want from the ARC grant? I don't have any real expectations except for that it's spent on. 
what it's supposed to be spent on as far as that. Do you think the farmer's market is location is one of the best places on the section? I don't mind it being there. I mean, it's not a big deal for it to be there. I want it to be the place that makes the most sense or that fits in with the plan of the overall project for the town. You know, so uh, I'm not sold one way or the other when it being here or there. I'd like to see the whole plan. Once that is developed, I think it's in different pieces right now from my understanding and see where it actually makes the most sense as far as parking and where people are going to be and you know. so do you want you want to go into that on that subject now I'm mm -hmm. happy to oh, you can look at you can send us an email and we can talk about it in the next conference. well I just wanted to this was the, these were the conceptual plans that that the town used when we applied for we applied for um, almost 500,000. I guess it was 500,000 dollars of uh, for the ARC construction grant, and we received 275,000 dollars. And uh, and so at that time, the grant uh, budget and these were these were pre-COVID numbers uh, included, you know, uh, the brick pavers and and, uh, and 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 other improvements like the tables and such, and then. Um, so that was part of the grant, and these are were all drawings that were done at a conceptual level of what an active market would look like. Sure. The brick papers, you can still. Um, okay, can I? Right now, if he was four and a half million dollars, he went from like two million to four and a half million dollars to do the project on Hickok Street. You don't think that this will be that? Drawing right that would be like a million dollars, and that was before town council actually voted to have that street open. Um, because before they they so th this is during an active market, uh, and then uh, as far as is what it would look like, um, you know, so that's when it would be shut down, it potentially. And again, this is a that was a movie night scenario. Uh, let me go ahead and. This is what you know is was shown during the conceptual drawing, and as the management team gets together and works with the uh, uh, works with the the designer, uh, they will go to dive into what will be the best design moving forward. Is it going to be the wood? Uh, is it going to be a metal structure? Uh, you know, the awning on wood with the arcade that's with the retractable uh, awning here. Um, because the, the idea was that the folks could be on this side and, and get serviced here uh, by folks, and then you'd have tables at different places, uh, so you'd have different corridors down the street when the market is closed. And this this was just a conceptual idea of you know how a car could pass. Here again, if a, if a market's open, I think that it. It, it, the, the street, like it was in the past, would need to be shut down. That's how they showed one-way traffic in the conceptual plan. So now what we would be is moving towards uh, a, um, we, we'd have a, a schematic design phase that we would work with. In the, this was in the, the contract uh, uh, that, that was uh, in the packet uh, last uh during the last council meeting, uh, but it was a schematic design phase, which uh, the management team would have a kickoff meeting with the designer, then they'd have a second meeting that they would hone in on the design, and then the third meeting they would they would finalize the design, and then and then the designer does uh, uh, construction drawings, uh, and then uh, and then assists with the bidding of the project, and then and then does construction oversight and closeout. For the project, this would be a federally funded project, so it does require a lot of uh, a, a lot of um, you know uh, paperwork and meeting uh, you know uh, you know the Davis Bacon wage requirements and, and different federal requirements. So there there is quite a bit more paperwork than uh, than it would if it was just state dollars. Uh, so so we do have to account for that, and and that's so our architect uh, our designer will help with 
processing all of that uh, paperwork and then also working with the uh, the contractor if there are any questions throughout the process they'll do a number of visits to the site uh, and um, and then if there's any design issues that come up during construction uh, this will be a very you know delicate process is, is because we're kind of weaving uh, we're dovetailing two construction projects together uh, because the state dollars the four million dollar drainage project that you mentioned that that is uh, not federalized that's not federal dollars so so that doesn't have the same requirements and we'll uh, almost you will likely have a different contractor uh, you know I would have, I think you know in almost all cases we're going to have a different contractor than uh, than what we would have to do the structure the uh, the farmers market structure so uh, we have a contractor on board now uh, EC pace for the um, drainage project there is uh, basically uh, some time period that they they're ordering the materials uh, and so because they have large uh, concrete structures that they're ordering and uh, and so they're um, they are looking at starting uh, likely in September for that but as we get a, a better idea of of their schedule of EC Pace's schedule and how they want to they're going to be starting down in the Commerce Street area and then work their way uh, to Hickok Street and then over into Main Street which that will be a, a big project for, uh, on Main Street um, and, and, and include some closures and so um, and so th then it's a matter of figuring out you know when on Hickok Street I think maybe it was two or three meetings ago it went through the proposed design that was part of the drainage project of the stamped concrete with the uh, the with uh, concrete uh, kind of poured concrete uh, and then and then it's a zero grade into the stamped brick portion concrete of the street that then goes to a uh, to a curb and then I think a six foot sidewalk to a knee wall on the church side for sitting so that that'll be you know a natural gathering a place for people to sit um, and then um, and so uh, that you know that that is being done as part of the drainage project so so then we have to coordinate you know where where those holes are left uh, you know and that's that's where our designer will work with the, the design team of the uh, of the stormwater project to ensure that uh, that the where the utilities are moved where um, you know where uh, any other um, it, we're going to have un, well, the utilities like we're going to have underground elec uh, electricity there so the power lines will be moved underground there's a water line significant water line that needs to be moved so uh, we'll be eliminating all conflicts between the the footers for the farmers market structure that would then go in uh, and then that's when we would have a different contractor come in and finish you know the farmers market structure and so and that's that's where the two hundred seventy five thousand dollars for the ARC grant comes in my, my yeah. thing is um, I know Brian Epperly said he did not care for having in the downtown. It was going to be it's always so much work. The bathrooms was always a problem. Um, the having to move all the people down there was a problem. That everything uh, it was a lot cheaper to do at the rec centers. I actually like it at the rec center just because of many ways. Obviously, it's uh, very visible. There is obviously it's very busy, um, but. Um, is not filling the purpose that the, the, the farmer's market was made for. I have asked to see if we could figure out with um, the rec department how we could accommodate to move the farmer's market at least, you know, if it's four weeks out of the month to bring it downtown to Christiansburg. How do you feel about bringing it to um, just coming out with locations to bring it downtown for one that is accessible to town council. And this has nothing to do with my business because I know we're very close to town hall. But my suggestion was to bring farmers market and maybe talk and see if there is a way to put it next to the Brooks title um, building. 
um, if there was a possibility, maybe within distance, or maybe even over here in Town Hall where we have, like, on the parking lot, maybe there is a way to have it there and to have the ability to have town employees park. I know it's not the best thing, but, you know, we're trying to figure, I'm trying to figure out, like, is there a possibility of maybe that one Thursday or whenever the farmer's market is going to be, that you move the employees to park maybe closer to the other side where we just purchased and then have the ability to have closed down some of these uh, parking spaces that you guys have to have farmer's market down here to not lose the feeling of the farmer's market thing. Because if that was what was created for, do you see anything like that being a positive? And plus, you'll have the bathrooms right there for the, or maybe even moving it to the downtown park, or um, any ideas, Amanda? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I mentioned I've lived in the community since 2019. And I've gone to every other community's farmer's market except for Christiansburg because it's not on a weekend. Yeah. And that's aspirational. I think we really need to, that should be a goal, you it know, needs to try to, to get a Saturday a weekend, market. Which it can't be at the mm -hmm. rec center on a weekend because mm -hmm. they can't accommodate it on a weekend. So that's, well, and even, you know, if you're looking to get it to a weekend, then even town hall, if it's, if it's proposed to do it there, it wouldn't be a problem because the town employees aren't here on a weekend. You know, we've got a big open vacant parking lot. <laughs> well, it would be really nice to have it on Saturday. But even when it was on Hickok Street, it was a hard time. They had a hard time finding vendors because, let's face it, they don't want to come to Christiansburg when they have a market in Boxburg that is already established and well. They have a lot of food traffic. What? Yeah, they Originally, they, I, do, I do think there's an opportunity there, though, because, I mean, I think a lot of the farmers, even that, that do go to those different markets, have grown to the point where they could probably take on another market. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but Blacksburg, I heard, was also turning some people away this season that weren't connected to farming. So if it's like a craft or some other type of a vendor, they weren't allowing them to participate, which opens up some additional people that may be looking for a new market to go to. So I, I don't well, I would I don't, agree, yeah. I think Saturday is a great great goal. I think yeah. Saturday to me the goal should be Saturday more than it doesn't matter where it is as long as it's Saturday. I would go if it was a Saturday. I'm not gonna go on a Thursday afternoon. So is that a fact like changing the target bra and the team and Amanda and see I mean, Rachel, if there is a possibility to have a downtown in town hall <coughs> parking lot or to have it over there on the new parking lot or to be able to see if any of those farm people, I mean, the, mm -hmm. the, the vendors will have any interest because now you'll have real bathrooms to use. There will be, you know, um, I, I don't know, there's parking. There's a lot more parking available now because you won't have all the government agencies downtown, the lawyers' offices, all the doctors' offices and stuff. So, I mean, you brought a really good point. Um, one of the things on, on that side of town, too, I mean, there is, there's a lot of things happening on Thursday. And he, that Presbyterian church has those meals on Thursday, you know, it happens to be on Thursday. And so... Working with maybe bringing talk to Brian and see if there is a possibility to or Rachel. Um, I do like your idea, Amanda. Depending for the Saturday market. And depending mm -hmm. on how how well things are going or how how many days you want to have a market. So from my experience for the market I did in Hillsville, I built one there, and it was in the downtown. Um, and it was on Thursdays, um, and it was one, obviously Hillsville is not as big of a community or, you know, as easy to draw people in, <laughs> um, but, and I didn't say that, <laughs> but, <laughs> and I may be biased here too, but I do think that when you talk about farmer's market, you're trying to provide something that clients cannot get. For example, a tomatoes that are fresh from the garden or something like that, right. you know. But I do think that when it comes down to crafts and things like that, there is a reason why you have a storefront. 
you know, if you have someone that makes candles, now all of a sudden you're going to have your same businesses that you're trying to promote in your downtown, you're maybe steering them away because now all of a sudden you're not having to have a building to have the sales of your candles or whatever that is. And I mean, the same thing goes down with flowers, you know. I think, I think businesses need to start somewhere. You know, they need to, even if it's somebody that's starting with a craft or, or something that they do as a hobby at their home, and they've started the business, so they need to sell, you know, at a, at a farmer's market to, to begin with to get their name known and to get their products out there so that they can afford to get into a brick-and-mortar location. It's, got, it's just a starting point, I think. I don't see it as a competition. Um, I don't know um, because it could be, you know. You don't want to deter the, the businesses that you currently have and make it worse, you know what I mean? I don't see that as being the same. I don't think people go to the farmer's market as a, I'm going to go here instead of going there kind of thing. It's, it's not, it's a completely different. Well, let me put it this way, and I'm just going to tell you about flowers. And the farmer's market in Blacksburg has, uh, they make flower arrangements for Mother's Day, and they're open on that Saturday. Now, all of a sudden, you know, I do have a flower shop, which I'm for, I, you know, I own downtown. If that was going to be, competing with the same thing or whatever were the chances that the possibilities are, I don't want to compete with this. I can just shut it down and have lawyers' offices here, you know? And so you really, if the the thing is for you to push some type of, you know, something that is not, you want to attract people here that would not normally come here for other things. Well, I, I guess I'm under the philosophy. When people look to go to a place to eat, they're going to go to the place where there's multiple restaurants, not where there's just one, because they want to be able to get in and get something to eat. It's the same thing. You could be thinking, people could be thinking, oh, I want some flowers. I'm going to go downtown. Whether I get them from the farmer's market or I go to that quaint little shop over on Main Street, I'm going to love whatever flowers I end up with, but downtown's the place to get flowers. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's not necessarily meant to be a competition thing. It's, it's meant to be the driving force that's bringing the people to that location to go shopping for whatever that need is. Those, those guidelines, that's it. And those guidelines you can put in place, and I don't know what the guidelines for the farmer's market here are, but those guidelines mm -hmm. you can put in place for like the vendors that you accept, accept mm -hmm. into the market. So um, there was a certain criteria that that they met. Right, you know, that you're selling so. goods within or services within a certain radius, uh, you know, that you're growing or you're, you're, you're selling the things that you make or, you know, I mean, you can make it as restrictive and believe me, farmers will get involved with those conversations and they'll, you know, and they'll have their opinions as well because I've, I've seen it before, you know, that, that they really do, uh, you know, that, that everybody, you know, Somebody may say, well, I think it's fine if I go down to North Carolina and buy a box of apples and come up and sell those. But you have another vendor that's going to, that grows apples, you know, in, in Floyd County and says, no, you know, I, don't, I think that that's unfair that they do that because they can provide at different times of year. And, and uh, it's, so the market really needs to kind of figure out, yeah, what how, what they want to sell and how they want to, yeah, which may what be they the want to do. Yeah, the same type of thing that you're yeah. talking about, you know, if, if there's a problem with, you know, people purchasing more things at, at the farmer's market and it pulling away from the businesses downtown, then you don't want that, and that means that guideline might need to Right, but if it change. would be like somebody, would you object to somebody that grows their flowers selling flowers at a farmer's market? That's what she's saying. Yeah, yeah. so if you grow flowers, you shouldn't sell at a farmer's market? Are you? I think I have a requirement of like a million dollar bond or something for your farmer's market. Last I saw there was like a big requirement that it wasn't going to be like somebody just going in their yard picking flowers. Oh, no, 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 I'm talking, to, I'm talking, to, yeah, about, prof, you know, yeah, professional farmers that grow flowers. Um, but, but, like, what I was saying about the market, the pavilion, like, or, or in Hillsville, we had it on Thursdays, but it started to be successful, so it was something that we were considering growing to Saturdays as well. And so 
or you can, you know, decide to alternate it um, because sometimes it's nice having it on a weekday because it pulls people downtown on a weekday. And if you, you know, there's sometimes weekdays are slow for businesses. And then, you know, if the church is um, giving away free food and doing those things, those people probably also might be on the SNAP program and the farmer's market, they offer SNAP, right? Is that correct? Mm -hmm. um, so maybe they would be able to get some fresh produce as well. Um, so this project is going to take two years. Oh, I think the ARC, okay, yeah. Well, the and grant. so right so, now we got to think about what's taking place from now until two years. Mm -hmm. And that's if our main goal, once again, is to bring the farmer's market downtown, you need to continue to build on the yeah. mentality to the people because if you don't, you will lose that. You know, you will lose that drone. So I really want, and even Amanda can make, or maybe you can talk to I, I will Randy talk, I, and, and Brad and Rachel and stuff and come up I will with, talk to with Brad, a plan. I, I, right, I will caution that. I mean, it is something that we have talked about, and you, you've talked to the staff before about it. You brought it up. Um, and it, I, I think it's logistics. I think it's the farmer's market. I know that they talked about uh, uh, for the opening day of the Huckleberry Park, uh, well, the spring and the summer event, having the farmer's market uh, out there for a day. And, and when they talked to vendors, they weren't that crazy about it because they felt like people, well, people are used to seeing me there. And that's a real that, that among vendors, I don't know if you ever been to like a, um, a, a, a a summer fair or you know people like their spots, <laughs> you know so you know so I do think that that those are concerns that I think we'll hear. I mean we we can definitely you but know talk about a pursuit, but you're saying we don't want to be moving them here one week and here another right, week, right? Yeah. Because first of all, people are slow to catch on, mm -hmm. okay, and to get into a new rhythm. We're creatures mm -hmm. of habit and. It takes a while for people, you know, to adapt yeah. when there's a change. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah. I think it would be very confusing to be here one week and there the next week, mm -hmm. and you know, just. Like but that. I think with property information, and everything else, because I, once again, I, and and I know it's a lot better for Brad to have it there. Obviously, there's a lot of well, and the, and the things vendors that work that out, well. right? You know, and the vendors mm -hmm. are already there, and everything is there. You know. But once again, if the the game plan and the reason why the farmers market was there was to bring people downtown, you need to figure out how to do that now, not two years later when the project is finished. You got to do that now, and and so that's just my recommendation for that. And I do agree with you. I mean, people do, you know, get used to a place and they want to continue to to do that, but. We got to make sure that people do realize the farmers market is coming downtown, like it or not. Otherwise, we may not be there, you know. Because Brad does need his event space. The parking space is getting smaller and smaller for his events because of the many people that are using the facility. And so there is a lot of things to think about too when it comes down to that. Um, right. Long launch Christian for that day. Um, tell me what it is you folks would like to hear about. Everything. How many people are a part of it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we just had the May mini workshop, which was regarding business finance. We had the potential, it was in this room, we had the potential to have 16 attendees. We had 13 people sign up and nine people show up. We had a guest speaker, the two facilitators, which is me and, and Daria, mm -hmm. and than our nine participants for that. Um, our next one is this later this month on the 26th, which is to do with business marketing. So we're going to cover um, marketing, um, sort of basics, um, branding your business, how to improve your business and social media presence. Those topics will be covered at that uh, mini workshop. And right now, I believe I have somewhere around five signed up for that workshop. Um, every What's workshop is different for this. This is on Wednesdays from 5.30 to 8.30. The, one, the mini workshops are a one-evening one free event. 
and part of that was just to generate interest and in, in let people know about the Launch Christiansburg meme program that's that coming in the fall. advertised on the bill or on Facebook? On the I, it's been yep website. all around. We've had it on our newsletter. We've got it on the um, electronic boards around town. If you've seen them there, on there is money given with this, right? The workshops are all free, and the no, uh, but you're, the, the town is giving the money, right? So or not? That's just how. No, the, so far right now the intention was the sponsorship was paying for the money that's, that's being provided as the grant funding at the end of the um, main event. The people that pitch their business ideas to the panel of judges will be having the potential to be awarded grant funding from the sponsors. Are so, you surveying yes. people after these trainings? Yes. So we love to see some of those surveys. Yes. Um, not only we we did a couple of different things because of the potential for looking for grants for for the future. We um, we sent out a pre uh, workshop educational assessment to know where people's confidence level is on the topics that we were covering, um, and then a post-event confidence level so we can see if there's improvements and what they've learned. We also asked them to complete a survey while they were here about the, the subject matter and the um, we had a you know a, a guest speaker and then um, our facilitators did you know parts of it as well and so we wanted to know how they felt about the, the way that we were performing the way that we offered the information the resources that they were provided so we did ask several questions about that and yes we do have results of those from the first workshop so far and we will collect those at every event. So how is the money? How's the money distributed? And I guess my question is, if I was to participate, obviously I cannot take any money from the town, and I wouldn't like that. But that is that something from like you're saying that businesses are sponsoring this. So are those businesses going to give the money directly to those participants, or how does the, so the, the town involve in sponsors? writing any checks? Yes, the town is involved in writing the checks, but the sponsors have given the money to the town. So it's in a special fund right now in the town and specific to Launch Christiansburg. So the money would need to be paid out from that Launch Christiansburg special account. It's not something to do with taxpayers' dollars or the general fund or any of that. Um, and those, so those dollars so far that are in that account have come from the sponsors, so the businesses that have, and you know, our county economic development department, different things like that, the um, Chamber of Commerce, the different sponsors that have sponsored Launch Christiansburg, not all just businesses, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, that's where the dollars and the funds have come to, from. Now the participants in the 10-week program are being asked to pay what we're calling a deposit, and that's because we don't want them to show up for the first class, take all of the, the book and the materials with them, and then never come back, because those books do cost us money to provide to the attendees. And so, um, so there's a $200 deposit. We're calling it a deposit because they're going to get their $200 that they're paying to the town back as long as they have gone through the entire pro program and pitched their um, business idea at the end to the panel of judges. Can you ask uh, Randy if he can answer you if I can participate without getting the launch? You would like to participate in the launch, Christiansburg? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I do have a, you know, an interest in running this Launch Christiansburg program year to year, at least once a year, maybe even more often than that, depending on how, how much interest there is in it. And um, part of the, we are in a, uh, Randy and I are taking some training to do with the potential to p apply for a grant in the future that can help fund this program well into the future, I guess. Um, and part of the education that I've been receiving, I, I, I did I did want to share that I came up with an idea w along with another community that does something similar where once this gains a little bit more popularity potentially after being run a few years potentially, you could involve the community in, in a way by saying, community, here's our, our businesses that are going to pitch and it's a big pitch event. The community gets involved and the community can, can vote on which business that they would like to see open, and those votes cost a dollar or five dollars a vote or whatever it is, and you use that money from the community's votes to pay the grants for the businesses that are winning the pitch competition. So it's not really even something that still would be funded by the town, per se. It would be funded by the community or the businesses or whoever is interested in those businesses coming to our community. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I do. I, I see a lot of potential for funding this in a, in 
different ways than maybe the town has considered in, in the past and, and still not really touching taxpayer dollars by funding this. Well, I think it's important because, you know, a lot of people have opinions, but, you know, who is actually doing it? And I think that they put their, you know, their intentions where their mouth is in their pockets, <laughs> you know. I think uh, that's actually kind of neat. I guess is that, are you working with, this year is not working with you because I know they're trying to get money for um, for businesses or doing something or whatever. This has nothing to do with that, right? With DCI? With DCI. Um, no, DCI is, I think DCI is looking to raise money for other purposes for, for downtown related stuff, not, not to do with this. They're not part of Launch Christiansburg. And one of you, I sent, you sent me an email, I apologize for, to both of you because today, I've been out of the office and today's my first day back and I really haven't had a chance to catch up on everything fully. Um, but I did see an email from one of you asking how much is Launch Christiansburg making for money and we aren't, people aren't paying to take Launch Christiansburg. It's not something, so it's a, it's a free program. We have the applicants paying a deposit for, but they're getting that money returned. So we aren't really accepting, the town isn't making any money by doing Launch Christiansburg other than the investment of the businesses coming here and the potential future tax dollars with that, rep, you know, that tax revenue that will, will be generated from that business coming here. But then when you said that the county was has the county giving you money for the launch? The county did sponsor three thousand dollars towards launch Christian. So that is still taxpayers' money. Okay. The, yeah, the county did. Yeah, oh. but yeah, that wasn't our. I mean, well, yeah, that's their decision. I guess the county's decision on how they spent the money. Right. <laughs> so through through, the, the, county, through so. the economic <laughs> development authority. Yes, it was and through the economic. I mean, it's still public dollars, but yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Um, the public arts advisory board. And do you have anything else about? It? Oh, yeah, I, I, I would just like to say one more thing about that, about the county doing it. It's kind of nice to see the county spend those dollars that are going to be coming specifically to Christiansburg. Oh, yeah. <laughs> believe me, I've been fighting with them for a while, with everybody. <laughs> um, especially when I write those checks to them, it, it really, this week was one of those weeks. Um, Public Arts Advisory Board update. Right, you'd ask for an update, and I just have a real <laughs> quick update. You know, as I think Casey had reported out that um, uh, at council that uh, we're looking at a, a doing a call for artists for 3 Roanoke Street for the Gravity Building. Um, we did learn last week that that it was requested that that uh, that be put on hold, um, and uh, and so uh, we are hopeful. Uh, we believe that there may be a change in ownership. And, and we have heard from the potential purchaser that they would be interested in, um, in, in, uh, in, in moving forward with us, but that would delay the call for artists. So we would not put out the call for artists. And, and the theme that they were thinking uh, about was a, uh, a Southwest uh, Virginia uh, natural scene or a, uh, a, a vibrant downtown scene, lively scene. Uh, so, so again, going to let the artists kind of run with those ideas and see what they come back with. We're looking at um, potentially an area of uh, like 36 feet by 14. Uh, so it could be a large mural. They may choose just to do, because it is a parking lot and cars do park near the, you know, the building, they may choose just to do the top portion of it. But we would, uh, you know, again, leave that up to the artists. To, to propose uh, what they would have. So we're hoping that we could, we'll be in a position in mid-July or so to put out the call for artists. So so we are in a bit of delay pattern. They, um, the group the group does meet uh, next um, next Wednesday, and then they'll, um, uh, you know, they'll decide whether they want to wait or if they would like to go ahead and try to find another spot. But that, they did, they have looked Pretty hard around, and that that is the best location that you know that they believe is available right now for for a mural. What happened um, to the solar panel company over there at Oak Cambria? I thought they had requested for a mural, and um, yeah, and they, they may uh, that just was not a high priority for the uh, you know uh, for for the arts board at this point. Oh, um, I thought it was, but I guess so. No, the the primary location that they're looking at right now is is uh, 
three run up street downtown. They'd like to do downtown because they have already done one uh, mural in Cambria, and they'd like to do downtown and also, you know, uh, another place in town. If, if we could find a place that, you know, a, uh, uh, an area that would have a, a maximum impact, yeah. or as possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. No, I mean it. Uh, yeah, it. it, it you know, there are there were locations like the the ABC store has a nice wall, uh, but we did contact uh, the state and they they did not you know they they, they would not entertain that thought to to work okay. with us <laughs> to, to, to put a mural on the, on the side of the building. So and there's a number of you know other places that we've pursued as well, but but they the the board will make a final decision whether to move forward with that spot or to put it back out and try to figure out another location uh, next Wednesday. I do want to have an update from uh, um, maybe Randy or you can figure out with uh, Mr. Hamlin uh, as far as the process for the demolition for that building because that's on their older items now. Um, what's the process and everything you make sure that we go through the process of sending the notices and everything before the demolition. Since that's going to be for that. Which building are you referring to? For the drive-through location. Oh, okay. Right. Under the, right. Yeah. Um, anything else that you want to talk about? For, I guess going back to this, yeah. you're needing what? Well, I guess if you would like to move forward with the proposed um, timeline on there, then I would just need to I will want to look at it one more time, and maybe we can just stop and stop and Because okay. I do think the timeline really starts on, on July 1st. Yeah, with right? the yeah. beginning of July, yeah. yeah. So we don't have very much time. Well, I haven't. I have to look at this one more time because okay. there's a lot of stuff that has happened ever since, and uh, especially with you know only one person trying to get the money now. I just. I want to use the most money that we can to help the town. Yeah, well, I mean, with the one person that is getting the money from the last round of grants means that there's more money put back into the general fund to use for the town from the last round. Yes, but it can also be used in very different ways. I mean, I'm sure we, we got a lot of ideas to use in different things, and we need it because we do, we do need it. Yeah, I don't know if it would qualify. Yeah, it might not meet the age requirements. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have plywood in there and there